no matter where I go or who I talk to, the number one issue that consistently keeps coming up as a blocker to their digital transformation journey is the lack of skills and capability. Globally, we're talking about a digital skills crisis. The solution, though, is to stop relying on the market, to stop relying on somebody else providing a pool of candidates that you can go out and recruit and start to invest and build your own skills pipeline. I think over the past 15 years, organizations have forgotten how to develop internal technical skills. It's been a commodity market, and because of that, organizations don't have skills pipelines in place. The solution to the problem is for organizations to relearn how to develop their skills and capability internally. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about my thinking in this area, why it's important and how organizations can do this without spending significant amounts of money. My name's Chris Buxton and I help organizations make the most of their data and technology enabled opportunities. I think as we start to think about solutions to the digital skills crisis, it's important to understand how we got in this mess in the first place. Because I think the easy answer is to say it's just all down to COVID and events over the last two years. But I think the reality is this has been a crisis that has been coming and growing for the last 10 years. I think the approaches of organizations and how they think about digital and how they think about the supply of digital is directly contributing to the crisis that we're seeing today. Now, I think one of the challenges that we see is that the, the choices that we make around technology in a lot of organizations and certainly in public sector organizations has become a procurement based activity. Now, the problem that creates is that your technology environment and consequently the skills necessary to operate your technology environment is basically at the tail. It's it's incredibly difficult to make choices around skills development because you have no idea what the market is going to give you as the best solution to your technology based problem. We talk about procurement led architecture and procurement led technology specifically because this is a problem that this creates that your architecture, the complexity and the skills crisis is being driven by the fact that we've got such diversity in our technology landscape today that it is impossible to upskill everybody with all of the capability necessary um, for this new world. Which then further leads us down an outsourcing model because the only way that we can implement all of these different technologies is to outsource the specific development activities for individual capabilities and leave our internal staff to try and maintain the overall environment and the, the operating environment for the organisation and all of the specific capabilities basically gets outsourced to vendors. Now, there's a number of challenges that that further creates because in doing so, the solution to your internal digital skills challenge around technology becomes a procurement activity. Um, it's not about how you grow people. It's about how do you go to market and find the right skills in the market. And because of that, I think organizations have lost the ability to develop the staff or if they ever had it. Um, they don't have the skills pipeline. They don't have the ability to bring in unskilled people with the right attitude and aptitude and grow them into the technology practitioners that they need in the future and that is directly contributing and causing the digital skills crisis we have today because if the market can't keep up with demand internal organizations don't have the means necessary to enable them to grow the capability themselves so I think one of the metaphors to use when we think about skills pipeline is the water pipeline. Um, I think this was the first time I, I saw this metaphor used was the um, ITP um, paper that talked about the skills crisis in New Zealand and some of the challenges we were facing as a country in relation to digital skills um, development. So I think for a lot of organizations, they will focus on the top of the pipeline. Um, so for them, it's all about encouraging our students to get into the STEM subjects, then go to university to study the technology disciplines um, so that they can come through through graduate programs and, and enter into the workforce. But it takes away from all of the other people that actually could deliver some incredible capability for organizations if we had the mechanism to enable them to enter the workforce and develop and grow through our systems.
The graduate program assumes that you have somebody with a level of technical ability and technical capability and education before they start. Developing that pipeline is the most important thing organizations need to concentrate on. Being able to create a pipeline for diverse workforce from those areas of the um, society that aren't able to go to university. Maybe it's through economic or social demographic, maybe it's location based, but there is a wide range of people in New Zealand especially that could deliver incredible digital capability and enter the digital workforce but are denied the opportunity because they haven't been able to go to university and get a degree. So the number one thing for me and for organizations to focus on, I think is enabling those starter positions, enabling those um, initiatives and opportunities for people without degrees to enter the technology workforce. So the entry level positions that allow someone to come in, learn, uh, and grow some technical capability and, and evolve into the technical practitioner we need, we'll start the ball rolling in this area. So I think as we start to move down the pipeline, the big theme that starts to come through in all of the challenge areas is about opportunities. It's about opportunities for staff to learn new skills and capability or going to a position that allows them to develop and grow. Um, whether that's people that are coming in from a different educational background or from a different skill set, whether that's our existing workforce looking to retrain or reskill in a new technology base, or whether it's just about our, our technology staff wanting to grow in the specialism that they have, organizations are not equipped with the necessary mechanisms to allow staff to grow into those positions. And I think the model I use when I think about this is the 70-20-10 split. Um, so 10% fits into that um, formal training environment. So when staff learn and when they digest information and create new skills and capability, about 10% of that information will come from formal training courses. 20% comes from um, relationship-based skills transfer, which is a really fancy name for basically saying they chat to their peers and they talk to other practitioners and they find out and get advice. Um, so it could be mentoring, it could be just working as part of a team and learning something that somebody else is really good at. Um, but it's basically using those relationships to, to transfer skills internally. The 70% area, I think, is the really interesting one. And, and the reality is, I think it's an area that if organizations spent more time worrying about, they could develop great skills and capability for far less cost. So 70% of skills and capability is built by people just learning by doing. It is skills and capability that people pick up over the life of their employment um, as they're doing things. Um, if they need to learn something new, they learn by doing, they read a book, they try something out. They, they learn by practicing the activity themselves. The other piece of this puzzle though is, is if we think about that 70% and the only thing that we're asking our staff to work on is the legacy environment. The only thing they're going to learn is that legacy environment. Staff will learn about the thing we're asking them to do. So if all we're asking them to do is not to upskill, not to learn new technologies and new capabilities, and just keep the lights on for our legacy systems, they'll become very good at that, but they will not be equipped for the modern workplace. The assignments that you give them and where you ask them to work becomes far more important than the training course you provide for them. And it also gives you a very low cost way of thinking about upskilling and how you're going to do skills transfer in your organization. So if we go back to the problem statement that actually we've relied on procurement and outsourcing for all of our new skills development, the solution is to not, not necessarily not rely on it, but make sure that our internal staff are included in the workforce for any new development activity. That allows them the opportunity to be exposed to the new technology, to learn by doing, to participate, to have the conversations with the skilled practitioners, perhaps from your vendor environment, so they can do that 20% skills transfer through relationships as well and build skills in that way. So I think the key message for today stop waiting for the market to provide a silver bullet 
recognize that you need to start upskilling and you need to start thinking about your own organizational skills pipeline and get on with it. My name is Chris Buxton and I help organizations make the most of their data and technology enabled opportunities.